Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Will. Kicks. <laughs> The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say, shake your radio more than three times and you're playing with it. You're listening to the men's room. <laughs> hey, the way we go. Welcome to show number 2,896. Along with Steve the Throw Hill, the Ted Smith, Woman Fox, uh, and my cock. Montgomery! Thank you. All right, the room. Hot tap today. Here come the bad jokes, bitches. The return of Ted versus the FCC. Get ready to play Profile This. Plus headlines, events from Shot of the Day, fun listener emails, and everyone's favorite TV time with Ted. Clack, clack. Drink it, drunk. All right, here we go. Dallas police officer walks into wrong apartment and shoots the man who lives there dead. <laughs> Meanwhile, naked Florida man starts house fire baking cookies on the George Foreman grill. And now he's living in his shed. To Yosemite, where teen taking selfie falls off a cliff. Man and seagull and cheeseburger leads to a hell of a tiff. And a dad and son are trampled by a giraffe in South Africa. That is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now, here's the question. Hola, bitches. Good day to you and yours. Listen, sometimes things just go wrong. They just do. We told you a few days ago about the 15-year-old Russian kid. He lost some video game that he's playing online. Because something went wrong. But he did not take the loss well. We know that because after losing, he decapitated himself with a chainsaw. True story. In England, this poor dude, 78-year-old guy, plays the lottery every week. Well, guess what? He knew that he had to put his numbers in, same numbers, every week. But as he's riding his bike to the shop, he gets hit by a car. He's knocked off his bike. Now, he's okay, but he missed playing his lottery number. If he played his lottery numbers, he would have won $20,000. He finds that out. He has a couple of drinks. He goes home, cooks himself a meal, falls asleep, and burns down his house. Because sometimes <laughs> the, everything about that's in one day. Things go wrong. A family in Washington, this is messed up. They survived the mass shooting last year in Las Vegas, all right? But the deal, essentially, with all the stress and anxiety that came with it, they got themselves a comfort dog. And then their neighbor shot the comfort dog. Sometimes things just go wrong. But sometimes you have to cut your losses and accept defeat. And that's what we want to talk about today. Today's question is, when did you just chalk it up to a loss? Be part of the big show called 844-999. Ola, like the Men's Room on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Men's Room Live. And send those emails to the Men's Room at mensroomlive.com. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. Hold the jaws and away we go. Welcome to show number 2,896. We're large in a charge program we have for you today. Bad jokes on the way as the drunk in charge Ryan Castle will begin to kick off the bad jokes right before we drink and toast with a shot of the day that might have been the shortest applause ever. That was unbelievable. That might be like a millisecond of applause. That was unbelievable. Other exciting return of Ted versus the FCC. We'll see if Ted can get another win in the win column with Ted versus the FCC. As Steve and I were out and up all night last night coming up with different rhymes and riddles uh, for Ted to challenge on uh, and tongue twisters, etc. Ted versus the FCC is coming up. We are. Yeah. Another round of profile this on the way. And today we're going to talk about, oh man, when did you just chalk it up? To a loss, and we'll start with this one. As the headline reads, Tesla's stock price falls more than 6% as two more executives left the electronic automaker and CEO uh, Elon Musk appeared to smoke marijuana on a podcast. The company's high-flying but volatile stock was trading around $265 per share, down 30% in the last month. Basically, after he got Still on expensive. Joe Rogan's podcast and smoked some weed, the stock price just went through uh, went through the basement. 
just dropped out. So they thought that the guy that thinks of the things that he thinks of did this not high. I'm not sure. I mean... Well, it's not the man's first joint. No, and he says that. He tells Joe Rogan that. Technically, it was a blunt. It was a blunt. Strong point. Right, yeah. yeah. Did it say what kind? You know what? He said... uh, Who did he give? He gave... uh, Joe gave credit to somebody who taught him how to... Oh, man. I can't remember who it was, but it was like famous people. You're like, it was like Snoop and something. Right, right, right. And since that point in time, he enjoys a blunt. So Elon Musk says, yeah. Uh, shortly after smoking, uh, Elon Musk looks at his phone and laughs, telling Rogan he was getting texts from friends asking why he was smoking weed during the interview. The interview was taking place in California, mm-hmm. at Joe Rogan's studio, and Elon Musk asks him, hey, is this legal? And Joe Rogan says, yes, because it is in California. It's well, absolutely go. legal, so of course, yeah, you're going to sit there and, uh, and smoke some weed. For whatever reason, though, uh, the stock just bottomed out uh, based on that and a couple of uh, other notes there from the company. All right, so that was uh, that was pretty bad. But either way, the guy's still billionaire, right? Millionaire? Yeah. yeah I mean, that's, uh, you know, whatever. He's doing all right. Yeah, it's a bad yeah, day. This is the worst story ever right here. And uh, I guess he can be uh, known as England's uh, unluckiest man. His name is Barry Enderby. And he has staked a strong claim to be the unluckiest man alive after he was knocked off of his bike, causing him to miss out on buying some lottery tickets. The 78-year-old's run of bad luck continued when a blaze ripped through his kitchen after he drowned his sorrows that night and accidentally, as they say, left his chip pan on. Ah, the chip pan. Ah, the oil in the chip pan. Uh, Barry missed the deadline to put his usual lottery numbers in by 15 minutes, and he missed out on 10,000 pounds. He is a former uh, county footballer and cricketer, and he revealed his misfortune started when he was knocked off his bike when a motorist pulled out in front of him. His leg was badly injured. He said, when I realized that I hadn't put on my lottery numbers that day, I went as fast as I could. But my leg is still sore, and I could only go slowly, and I missed the 8 o'clock deadline by 15 minutes. The 79-year-old got knocked off his bike, and that sparked a series of events. It was later that he found out that his usual numbers, 8, 14, 16, and 21, all inspired by his daughter's birthdays, hit the jackpot of 10,000 pounds. Then he said, despite not being much of a drinker at all, he decided he needed to go out for a drink after finding out about this misfortune. Yeah, I think he made the right decision. Barry Adam, oh, Wait a minute, did it say he played rugby? Uh, it says he was a footballer and a cricketer. Oh, cricketer. Oh, okay. cricketer. He says, uh, yeah. He you weren't going to buy the, not a if big he, drinker. If he had played rugby, I'm not buying that he wasn't a big drinker. Right. Yeah, uh, Barry said, look, when I got back home, of course I felt hungry. I put on some chips and steak, but I fell asleep. The next thing I know, the smoke alarm was going off. I threw water on the cooker. But that was the worst thing I could have done. That's correct. Barry woke up to his kitchen filled with flames and smoke after his chip pan then caught on fire. The blaze grew even larger, stripping roof tiles and melting an extractor fan. Thanks to neighbors who called what is 999, Mm -hmm. firefighters arrived soon after and managed to extinguish the kitchen blaze. Barry is now being held by family in the local community. A spokesman said, we're still uh, getting fires caused by unattended cooking. There are other alternatives to chip pans with hot oil. There are deep fat fryers we recommend uh, for cooking oven chips. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, had it, he, he says putting water on a pan of burning oil is not the right thing to do. Well, that is not. That's correct. Yes, exactly. You got to smother it, correct? That day. guy had a bad day. He did. Man. I mean, that the is... whole day. You got knocked off your bike. So you already have a bad day when you get knocked off your bike. But you're also 78 years old right. when it happens. So and then you miss so... playing your lottery ticket, you know, buying your lottery ticket, right? So your day hasn't gotten any better. Then you found out that you would have won playing the numbers that you play all the the time, so hell yeah, I'm going to get a drink, and then you fall I'll asleep you and your house burns down. It, you never take an easy spill on a bike. It no, always hurts like It always hell. sucks. It doesn't matter yeah. if you're eight years old, five years old. I took a spill on a bike this year uh, on the only one, t- two of two times I rode. Oh, you you're know, good at it. Though. Yeah, just got into some gravel, like, ah! You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. I jump up, you know what I mean? I'm like, all right, okay, I'm all right. Start pedaling down the street, I'm like, Ow. I am not all right. Ow. I know. My friend did it last year. Ow. And then, like, How bad? Same thing. Like, like they were just, honestly, they were just riding their bikes home after a night out and hit some gravel. I mean, it, it screwed up her knee, like her elbow. Like, oh, damn. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that it hurt. And it really hurt. Like, of course be, it hurt. To be 78 years old and to be riding a bike, that's mm-hmm. one thing. That's impressive, right? But I can't imagine well, how much more it hurts when you're 78 as it does. Oh, you know I'm sure, I mean? man. That sucks, sure. Our question, when did you uh, chalk it up to a loss? 844-999-OLA. 
Hello, Kelly. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. So you want to talk about chocolate went up for a loss some years back. I bought a, a little car, a little Subaru for just a couple hundred bucks. Had a blown motor in it. And I decided I was just going to, I'm going to put a, a remand motor, so a brand new motor, not a used one. Put a new motor in it, new radiator, new tires, new brakes. I mean, just everything. I was like, I'm going to make why didn't awesome. you ju- Why didn't you just buy a new car? Because uh, I could do all the work myself, and it was just uh, save much? a lot of money. I was going to say, how much, but how much money did all that stuff cost you anyway? Uh, it was about 2500 bucks. All right, so, okay. now, you, so now you've got 2700 into it. Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm under three thousand bucks into this car, and I get it all built out, and okay, and it's running great. And then about six months in, it just all of a sudden I'm driving along, and it just turns off, like you turn the key off, all the lights, everything just go completely dead. I'm like, well, what the heck is this? And then I pull over and put it in park, and it starts right back up and drives fine. I'm like, oh, huh, that's really odd. And it does yes. that a couple more times to me, so I take it over to the auto parts store and plug that little computer into it to see if it's. You know, give you codes telling you what's wrong, and there's there's no codes, there's nothing, and it just keeps doing this. I'm like, well, I can't afford to be missing work, and so I replaced this sensor and I replaced that sensor. I'm just randomly guessing, just hoping I'm going to guess the right one, and I finally just gave up. I'm like, I can't afford. I'm like another five or six hundred bucks into sensors at this point, and I'm like, I can't afford to keep pouring money into this, and it's not telling me what's wrong, and I can't figure out the well, super wait. dealership. I- how often would it do this? Like once a day, once a week, what? Uh, it was, yeah, it was like weekly, maybe twice a week. It, it was enough to be a problem. Yeah. I feel like this is like Sunday morning car talk. Right. You know what I mean? What <laughs> model did you say that was again? <laughs> yeah, it's a Subaru. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what I would check. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the dealership, they couldn't tell me what was wrong with it. So I finally, I chalked it up to a law, sold it for a thousand bucks because, you know, I like, said the way it was running. And I just asked the guy if he could tell me if he figures it out what it is. Well, he actually called me back like a year later. And he said, I, I put a new mass airflow sensor on it on the way home. I had ne- I've never had a problem. Oh, oh man. Man. Uh, 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 I see. That's what I was going to tell you. Part. Dang it. So anyway, that yeah. was my chalked it up for a loss. Oh, well, now you know. Yeah, then they rub salt into the wound. Like, hey, <laughs> air filter. <laughs> Bam. When, uh, when did you uh, chalk it up to a loss? 844-999-OLA. Hello, Gracie. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. So my chalking it up to a loss was about a year ago, my little brothers and I, for my birthday, decided to go take a hike. We left, uh, we left Silverdale about noon, and the hike, the, the drive to get there was maybe about an hour and a half. The hike was only supposed to take two or three hours and we were trying to find this particular landmark that we had no idea where it was what was we hiked for about what what? was the what was the landmark you were looking for we were looking for it was the the um the vance creek bridge it's you know it's blocked off and stuff they have it all um like an illegal hike now because people keep falling off of it (laughs) but we wanted to kind of just see where it was at okay um but because it's, you know, all blocked off and hidden from the public, there's no real information on where it's at. So we're walking, hoping just to catch a glimpse of it, you know, and just kind of go enjoy nature. And we, about six miles into the hike, we finally cut our losses and turn around. Um, and what should have been a mm, two or three hour hike turned into a six and a half, seven hour hike. And we found out on our way out, as we're all limping and sore and tired, that um, the the bridge we were looking for was less than half a mile from where we started. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so that was that was awful. Yeah. We we get in my jeep, and the nearest town is still about a forty five minute drive away. We stop for food, and my car overheats and just melts down in the McDonald's parking lot. <laughs> So now what do you do? <laughs> we called a tow truck. One brother and I rode home in the cab um, of the tow truck, and then the other brother had to wait for a ride. It's about midnight at this point. And mind you, we, we left at noon that day, so we've been gone for 12 hours. Um, How was the hike and, overall, though? Was it a lovely hike? I mean, it started out great, um, but then, 
you know, about eight miles in, we all started to hurt really bad. And we're all walking like we have, you know, broken joints. But, and, like, you, still have to walk, so that but, was, but you still have to walk eight miles back. I mean, like, that's the bad part. Like, don't turn around when you start feeling like crap. Yeah. You still have to go the same distance back, man. I used to, uh, I, we used to do the, uh, the Montgomery uh, family hike every year. And it normally took place uh, on the Oregon you coast. Had a family hike. Well, yeah, I take my kids when they're growing up. You know oh, what I mean? We take the dogs, you the wife. Doing oh, yeah. It. Okay. oh yeah, you know what I mean. And I look at the map and I look at these ridges and like you know, and you don't realize uh, when you're on the Oregon coast how the the cliffs just drop the f off. I mean, like yeah, because they're say called cliffs. They drop off. I mean, I'm talking like, hey, don't go over there. That thing just just falls off. And you look down, you're like, oh my god. Well, a lot of those, right? Yeah. But uh, a lot of the trails we got on <laughs> were, when you looked at a map, you know, like some had been kept up, others had not. But there were certain areas we had to get in between. There were certain areas. At Is times, everyone happy to be on this hike? No, you? they hate me. I was okay. about to ask the same hate my guts. And there was a couple of uh, hikes that were dictated by from getting to point uh, Wait, wait, wait point how many B. hikes... Do you once do? a year? Well, I mean, this was no. The but b- how many hikes in that once a year? Are you taking them on like four or but five? Normally, hikes? But normally, it ended up being like you know seven, eight miles, and they were just cussing me and just. I mean, you know how you feel about the pumpkin patch? Yes, you did that to your family. Oh, this hike, they hate it. But you like, keep doing yeah, more hikes. Well, like, I like all hiking. we're going to do this right. weekend is hike. Yeah, so even if you hated yesterday's hike, you'll oh, probably man. hate tomorrow's hike. I just leave hike. the kids at home. Mm-hmm. Or you couple. like to hike? Yeah. Here's a good one. A man yeah. accused of kicking a seagull <laughs> that tried to eat his cheeseburger at a New Hampton beach. He's been fined. How much does it? Uh, how much does it cost you when you kick a seagull? Did you know that it was? Uh, that's I, a fine. That's a fine. Okay, but the seagull took his burger. Correct? Seagull it comes over. To and yes, his t- tries to steal his cheeseburger. I, th- I look. I'm I mean, not. Look, I'm not saying you should be violent towards seagulls, but I feel like if. But somebody, I would be if it tried to eat my wait, cheese. That's yes. what I'm saying. I, if something's going to try to take my food, it's on. Like If a human if, did if it. You, if you reached it with your hand, yeah. slap it away. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, exactly. Especially if you didn't know me and I just came up to the boardwalk right. and tried to grab your burger. Yeah. And you'd be like, or your fries. Wait, isn't it a natural yeah. reaction of most animals? Like, if they're eating or they have food, they don't want you taking it. Here's Even the problem. Your dog will growl at you sometimes. Yes. The problem is, is if somebody turned this incident in. Who do, you, who do you go to? I mean, do you tell a cop? I, I feel mean, like what a I mean cop is, would be like, I there's don't a, There care. was a bystander that went to the police. Police investigated the report from a bystander at the Hampton Beach earlier this summer. The man, Nate uh, Ranklios, said he just returned from getting a cheeseburger and fries and was minding his own business sitting there on the sand. He said seagulls got to the burger and he spun around with his leg to shoo one away, but struck the bird. He said it was a simple mistake. A witness said it appeared the bird's leg was injured and that it struggled to fly away. How much again does it cost if you kick a seagull? I get I'm fifty bucks, three hundred bucks, one hundred twenty-four dollars, one hundred twenty-four dollars. You can actually get fined for kicking, kicking a seagull. seagull. Yep. And if the guy's telling the truth, it's like, look, man, I spun around and didn't get out of the way. And oh. kicking, they're trying to eat your food. I've never seen anything like crows. Crows are absolutely brilliant. Don't mess with them. They are absolutely. They'll remember your ass, yeah. man. I mean, uh, there's, there's. When I was smoking, one golf course in particular, and it had a fence going all the way down one side because it's in the city. All right, all right. So they tried to keep it roped off for whatever reason, public course. But they have this whole giant fence. I just bought a pack of cigarettes. The crows are trained to come down when you leave your cart to take a shot. They yeah. wait for you to get as far away from the cart. And then they come down, and they go through your cart, and they look for food. All Sandwiches, right. crackers, fruit, you name it, bags of chips. Half a hot dog. They will steal it. They will absolutely steal half a hot dog. They'll steal anything. Sure. They know they're smart. Because you just left your food. So I see one flying to the cart, and I'm like, all right, you know, what do we got in there? Like a Bud Light? I mean, what the hell right. is this? What, what, what are you? You're not going to take anything. And then all of a sudden, I see this crow with my cigarettes in his mouth. <laughs> And I'm like, you mother, and he takes off flying. With your smokes. With my smokes in his mouth, and he flies over that fence. Well, there's no way, there's no opening in the fence. The fence is there to keep, you know, whatever. But even if. Keep golfers out. Keep golfers out. If the fence wasn't there, how long would you have chased a flying crow with your cigarettes? Oh, man, I thought about jumping the fence, but the fence was too high. You were going to chase. Oh, so I drove the golf cart like 400 yards all the way down, and they came all the way back. But I did get that freaking crow to finally uh, drop my cigarettes. So you drove the golf cart all the way down? Oh, yeah. And oh, you see like drive, but he was flying course. off with my cigarettes. I was like, Jesus Christ. So when you, you know, see hole number one. <laughs> so like at the times I'm a smoker, I'm like, I need these cigarettes, you know? And he gave them back. No, he dropped them. He dropped them. Yeah, I screamed at him. 
So what? It's like, hey, bro, my smokes. That's what you said. Pretty much. Hey, bro. bro my, something like that. <sighs> you could have said, hey, crow. In Miles' defense, I talk to crows, too, sometimes. I was talking to a turtle the other day, and the woman goes, he's talking to a turtle. I don't know. Well, <laughs> yeah, I don't know the turtles. But crows are wicked smart. They are smart. Because, like, there's some in, my, uh, in, like, the alley behind my place, and, like, one kind of stands, like, point mm-hmm. and looks out always. and stuff. Always yeah. have a look. And always on the parents, so, like, too. So, like, he kind of started walking to me, and I was just like, hey, crow. I'm just chilling, man. You mm-hmm. can eat all the garbage you want. Yeah, I have the one that sits on my roof every morning, man. We always make eye contact. Like, yeah. brother and smoke. But he knows me. I know him. I don't care that you're there. But goddamn, they squawk. One thing I did learn, yeah. if you're having a problem with crows going through your trash can, right, which they will do. When I had a dog, I realized. They'll lift the lid on. Well, they lift the lid and they go through your crap. Uh, but my, my dog S pile bag. If that was on top, they left it alone. So it got to the point that every other neighbor's crap was everywhere all the time. Mine was always shut. And basically, I'd ration out the dog poop bags. Because they're like, why don't they go in there? I said, listen, man, if you want, one of the times I take my dog out, I will throw her ass in your trash mm-hmm. can. Seriously. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I would. currency. Yeah. I'd eat leftovers, but not if there was poop on top of them. <laughs> Yeah, well, the crows so, seem the thing. to agree. He shredded three of my that that crow uh, shredded three of my cigarettes when he stuck his beak in there. You know what I mean to kind of grab on. Wait, when he he it, he like yeah, and that's what I think happened. I think he got the nicotine in his mouth. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so you think so? Cigarettes? Yeah, totally, absolutely. Because it was all shredded up in there, but I still smoked with. Yeah, maybe. I kind of like the idea that he like popped one out. Right. He, well, he really did. Like he got. He <laughs> He's just, just like flying around. <laughs> smoke one later. Right. Like hello, my now. baby. Hello, my darling. Hello, springtime girl. These crows are kind of weird. They're getting all dizzy. Getting a nick fit. Smoking. Crows. Our question, when did you uh, chalk it up to a loss? 844-999 Ola. More of your calls coming up. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Ola Bichola, you have entered the men's room. Man in England. He is uh, g- causing a strong cling to be UK's unluckiest man after he was knocked off his bike, causing him to miss out on a lot of win of 10,000 pounds. The 79-year-old got knocked off his bike, sparking the series of unfortunate events. He still tried to make it to the store to buy that lottery ticket. He got there 15 minutes too late, but it, later he found out that his usual numbers of 8, 14, 16, and 21, which are his daughter's birthdays, they hit, and he missed the jackpot of 10,000 pounds. And despite not being much of a drinker, uh, 78-year-old Barry Enderby, he decided to go out for a few because he needed to after he realized that he had missed out on his fortune. So when he got back to his home, he said he felt hungry and he put on some chips and steak, but fell asleep. And the next thing you knew, uh, there was an oil fire and the smoke alarm had gone off. I threw water on the fire, but that was the worst thing that I could have done. Barry woke up the uh, uh, woke up to his kitchen filled with flames and smoke. His neighbors called nine nine nine. Firefighters soon arrived and put out the blaze. Our question: When did you chalk it up to a loss? Eight four four nine nine nine. Ola. Hello, Arky. Welcome to the men's room. Ola. Ola. So uh, my chalk it up for a loss. Um, I spent about four years as a commercial fisherman. And at one point, I decided to hitchhike and kind of explore rural towns. Okay, where? Alaska. All right. Alaska, right? Okay. And I ended up in Kodiak, Alaska. And um, and how do you how do you hitchhike uh, to an island? I'm just curious. Oh, um, I'm sure you take a ferry hitch- over. Hitchhiked out of uh, Anchorage uh, on the Alcan to Homer, Alaska. Met a few fellows there, and they convinced me to take a ferry to Kodiak. Okay. So. Did that over the fall. Um, got to know a captain out of Seattle, and the guy said, you should come back next year, and I went in the spring. I spent some time in a, in a small town and uh, got to know the place really well. I mean, I was doing everything right. I was going to church. I was, like, helping people out left and right. I was getting a good reputation, right? All right. And I met some guys that were interested in mixed martial arts, and they were uh, planning a fight. And I'd been doing it for about ten years. Um, they uh, they set up the fight. A lot of guys were kind of inexperienced. They had some boxing, wrestling experience, but I had like the whole well-rounded thing. I got I got fight of the night at the with those fights, and um, and with all that going for me, where everybody was kind of figuring out who I was, I was kind of new in town. I was offered like, um, well, first I, I was given a place to train and help somebody kind of work their MMA game. And then um, I was offered a place where I could I could teach kids. I could, uh, you know, I could kind of 
have a little place in a rural town. That was You're like this somewhere. weird character on a mm -hmm. 70s TV yeah. drama. He hitchhiked to Kodiak Island. He went to church. <laughs> he knows we Jojo. He helps people. Like, True story, man. He's got one cloudy eye. I mean, it <laughs> seems positive. It seems very positive. It's just like, this is nothing it's Cobra like Cobra Kai. Right. All right, so you got all it's that going on. I was, it was great, man. And, like, I was, like, ready to settle. I was, I was digging it. I met a girl. I uh, met friends. It was it was going great, and then maybe it was like the fisherman part of me. I went on a drunken I went on a drunken binge, and I uh, and I just lost everything, man. I ended up vandalizing a uh, church in the in town, and what, did you just lose your what, what Did the, you just lose your mind? I think so, man. I, well, I, uh, what were you drinking? I mean, like you were doing all this positive stuff. You get drunk. Mm -hmm. Hey, what, what were you drinking? Uh, mostly uh, Captain and Coke and... Uh, huh. See, I always have a good buzz on when I drink rum. pot on top of that, too. Not uh, it normally doesn't make me violent. No, I don't. Wow. That, 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 I don't think it's the, uh, was, the, 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 the... Whatever the booze is. I think it's the way the booze affects this, right. this guy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what else did you do besides you vandalized the church? What else? Um, I, I was arrested in front of the church like uh, with like shirtless... No, telling the cops I was I was there to get married, and it just kind of. Do you remember any of this? Well. Do you remember any of this? I, I remember like thinking uh, a scene out of The Godfather where like the guy's getting married or something. There was a like my mind was not in the right place. Was what I did. How many, how many days had this drinking thing? Was it just a one time event, or had been going on for a couple days? It was like a bender bender, or what? I think it was, I think it was like a five day bender. It was like. Uh, and no drugs involved other than weed. You didn't try anything else? No meth? No PCP? Nothing like never that? Never in my life, man. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, random question. Are you native? I'm Hispanic. All right. Okay. Why well, just sometimes like natives, like that's yeah. why in Alaska there's certain cities and tribes that oh, can't have alcohol as it mixes so, bad with their blood. All right. So after all this goes down, now were you destructive all five days or was it just the very end of the bender? I, I started on a downward spiral. I, I got fired from a job. I was like just distracted. I was just kind of little. Okay. I was high on life. Yeah. How, how are you doing? You, doing? you seem to be doing okay now, right? Dude, I'm. I got a great job. Wonderful. Kid. I mean, okay. All right. Cool, There's the good end of the story yeah. right there. Okay. Jesus. Wow. I've never been on one that bad. I mean, I've been on some bad ones. Wow. They drink and sound bad. I know, man. Jesus. Hola! The shenanigans continue on the Men's Room Radio Network.